Hi, I'm Laura, and I'm here today to ask for your help. I would like your help so that you can prevent me from descending into the pit of madness, because there are three ways that I feel I am becoming the Prince of Darkness. How is that? It's because for the past four or five months, ever since this whole pandemic shutdown happened, I have pretty much been living on camera. I'm a corporate trainer, and boy, that Zoom training has really heated up for me. So I have been on camera quite a bit, working out of my home office here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And there are things that happen to you when you're on camera all of the time, psychological things. And I am hoping that you can save me from descending into madness and we can have a conversation about what it's like to live on camera. But before I ask you for your help, I'd like to ask you another question. And that question is, are you more like Ozzy Osbourne or are you more like Kim Kardashian? And I know that's a really unfair question. And you might be thinking, Laura, that's a terrible question. I'm like, neither of those people. How dare you? But if you've been on camera as much as I am, the answer is uh, you, you actually might be like both of those people. And let me explain three different ways why you may be like Ozzy and Kim and not really thinking that you're like Ozzy and Kim. And the first reason is that first one that I alluded to is that we are living on camera a lot right now. Back in the 1970s, Ozzy Osbourne was with Black Sabbath and he was known as the Prince of Darkness for his music. But then in the early 2000s, he allowed a TV show to come into his home and film him and his family. And the TV show became The Osbournes, and they lived on camera. And later on, of course, Kim Kardashian. He, she also has been filmed on camera, she and her clan, for the past 15 years or so. So living on camera is one way that you, we may be descending into the Prince of Darkness and one way that we're both like Ozzy and Kim. And the second way is that we are playing reality theater when we do this. Like Ozzy and Kim, not all of those situations are actually reality. Quite a few of them are contrived or they even seem scripted. And we have the same thing going on with us as well. We might be using Zoom virtual backgrounds. Some of us may clean up our acts a little bit in the background so that people can't see the mess. I know that I have wires all over my office right now, as do many speakers, things being patched together for different microphones and lighting systems. So it's not exactly real. It is a bit contrived, isn't it? And then the number three way is the privacy erosion that we're facing. I'm finding that people are asking me all kinds of questions about what's going on in my office, which makes me do things like put up a a screen or have a virtual presence so that my privacy isn't so much eroded. So I set that up so that we can start having a discussion about how we can prevent ourselves from becoming like Kim and Ozzy, even though we are spending a lot of time on camera. And I think the first question we need to ask ourselves and others and have a discussion about it is, if you're a knowledge worker who is working out of the house... How can you be a thriving knowledge worker that produces meaningful content and products, not schlocky reality show stuff, but actual content and products that are worthy? And that's worthy of a deeper discussion. I think that's a really good question to ask ourselves. Number two is how can we blend that professional and personal life with authenticity and with integrity? I don't want to be Ozzy. I don't want to be Kim. I do want to have a blended life that is both authentic and has some integrity to it. And last question that I think is important for us to ask ourselves and others is, how can we build this on-camera work environment and still avoid fame and keep our privacy? Now, let's dig into this and have that deeper discussion.